summary blanket um, 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 permission to record any of my lectures unless I specifically say don't record that because that's just, you know, you got CYA every now and again. Um, I, I know that this is stressful and difficult and I know how much um, effort and energy it's going to take over the next particularly um, 11 to 12 weeks and I empathize with you. Um, Empathy is different than sympathy. Sympathy means I feel sorry for you. Empathize means I understand what you're feeling, and I do because, like I told you, I'm a student, um, and I've been through several nursing programs myself, so um, I do understand. Nonetheless, there is a minimum level of competency that you all must reach, and it is my job to help you do um, to do my best to help you get there. This is a collaborative effort. Um, I know my role and I'm gonna stay in my lane. Um, and I'm gonna do the best I can to make myself available and help you all. If you need help, you reach out. Um, I make lots of jokes. Um, sometimes I have to be a little bit more careful and try to filter and censor myself. Um, I uh, don't, so sometimes I use students as examples, but I prefer to use students as examples um, like Dine like um, Danette, um, who, who, who has kind of become a bit of an example for today, um, in a good way, because it, 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 we learn from each other. Um, but um, please don't, um, I don't want to have to make any examples in a bad way, because um, I will, because I don't really have a filter, and, um, and I just don't have the time um, for BS. And that's not what this is about. This is about like helping you all get through and taking this seriously because you've got people's lives in your hands. Now, um, I don't require that of any of you all. I just ask if you're not willing to participate in a particular way, step outside so you don't distract your classmates. Um, the test will be the same. At the end of the day, everybody gets a grade, same way as everybody else. And so, um, and, and I give, make myself available to everybody in the same way. Um, I try to be respectful. If I'm not being, I'm human. So definitely let me know, say, hey, that, that offended me. And, um, and I will apologize um, and do the best I can to um, not do it again and to, to rectify the situation. Um, we're all human, so we all need to give everybody in here room to grow and um, room to slip up and make mistakes and say the wrong things or say the right things or whatever it is. Um, so, so this is a collaborative effort and we're all in this together. But um, I will put you out. So there are a couple of, let me see here. Let me pull this PowerPoint up and we will get started. Um, I, you have a test next Thursday. Let me just put that on the table. It's coming up quick and it's over four chapters. What? So the, um, I'm ready. sometimes I talk fast. You may need to slow me down. Sometimes there are some concepts that we need to spend a little bit more time on. Please feel free to say, hey, go over this, because it's, it does, it does it, nobody a justice for me to go through this um, and you not have understood any of it. I'd rather only go through half of it and really understand half of it. Um, but we do have to kind of move quickly, so we want to kind of minimize um, a lot of uh, non-productive discussion. Um, and if you're not sure what that is, don't worry, I'll, I'll help you point it out. I'll point it out when I see it. hard but play harder um, so I, I like to have fun but um, I'm also about my business okay, so we're gonna try to get through as much as we can today and uh, we'll see where we go everybody have a book everybody sign the attendance sheet where is that thing right here right it 
Anybody here? Are we missing anybody? Johnson. 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 Definitely. <laughs> um, okay. Let's get started then. So, it's your responsibility to know the law. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Um, and our contract with you all is the handbook and the syllabus. You'll notice on the top of the syllabus um, the um, I think it's the last page. Uh, it says something about the schedule is subject to change, but that we will tell you in a reasonable amount of time. Um, so do note that. But other than that, pretty much everything um, that's in the syllabus, this is, this is our contract with you. Uh, so make sure you familiarize yourself with it. But we're going to go over it in just a second. Um, so trying something a little new this semester. We don't have a centralized place to communicate. Is that right? You all all have Delaware County email addresses? No. Um, you all have email accounts? Everybody yeah. has an email account? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, this is the website that we're going to use for the course. It's not all the way set up yet, but your homework for tonight, and just expect that every night you'll have homework. Um, your homework tonight, non-graded, is to register for the course. Um, now, I suggest you go on and register for the course so I can um, open it up to you all and you all can have access to everything online. Um, and it, this will just be in your best benefit. So things that I intend to put up here will be all of the lecture, the PowerPoints. And I'm going to try to put the PowerPoints up ahead of time before class so that you have an opportunity to kind of peruse them. But if you lose your paper, you always have a place to go back and get the PowerPoint. Um, We've got the video camera running, uh -huh. so we're going to see about trying to get the lectures loaded up for you. I have no idea if that's going to work, but we'll see what we can do. We'll at least have somewhere for you to, to go back and review the lectures if you need to. <clears throat> I'm also going to put homework assignments up here. I'll also pass them out in class. Um, any other kind of um, help me study guide, activity, whatever, I may put up there and I'll let you know. Also, the exam reviews will be posted up here. Um, so I will bring in the review guide, which is a list of everything that will be on the exam tomorrow for your exam next Thursday. Um, also, this is, an, uh, this is a place where you can um, blog a little bit. So if you have some questions or something that, um, um, I, I don't know that I will expect you all to be doing much blogging, but I will be doing blogging. So if there's a particular concept that comes up that I want to maybe elaborate a little bit more about or tell you this is what's important to know about these things, I'll put it in the blog um, and, and let you know what's there so you can kind of read it. Um, issues that come up that I want to address with the whole class. So we'll, this is a, we'll try it out, see how it works, give me feedback and let me know what's working and what's not working. But you need to go to this website here and it will um, give you instructions on how to register for access to this course. Questions about that? Um, okay, let me go back a second. We're gonna go over the syllabus. So I'm looking at the syllabus now. Um, the required texts are the ones that I just passed out. Do you all also have a copy of the maternity ATI? Yes. Yeah, so you do have that. So you also want to use that. Um, okay, let me know after class and we'll see about getting those for you. Um, you also have a web, there's a website that goes along with your maternity book. Um, it's the evolve.elsevier and it's got some practice questions for each chapter. So I suggest you check that out. I'll probably still post those practice questions 
um, online or we may do some in class and I will post the, I believe the answers are what is uploaded. The questions are actually in your book. There may be some extra stuff. So you should at least peruse the website and see what's up there. Um, additionally, so this is really important. I do tutoring on Mondays. Today's not Monday, is it? No. Good, I can go home after this. Okay. Um, on Mondays, I tutor from 4.15 to 6.15. Um, specifically for the maternity class, um, level one is more than welcome to come if they have some issues and not can maybe do some individual attention, but that is a standing tutoring session. Um, so I'll be here, whether you all come or not, um, just expect me to be here um, and basically stay after class. Uh, so I know that you all's schedules may not allow you to come to tutoring necessarily. So if you want, if you need tutoring and you can't come on Mondays, you need to talk to me quickly so we can figure out something that, you know, some way that we can work it out. We want to make sure that you have access to what you need. Um, but, but, but don't wait till like week 10 or 11, because at that point, I mean, I can tutor you, I'll tutor you, but you know, if, if you fail the first four exams, you could blow the fifth one out of the water and I still am not sure where you will land. So what I'm saying is just don't, don't wait till the end. Um, pace yourself, that first exam is, it is, how do I say it? It is an exam that helps you know where you need to be. So it's one of the more difficult exams because you're getting to know my testing style, you're getting to know my expectations, and um, the learning comes more from reviewing the questions that you got wrong. So we'll do that in class. We'll do a test review insofar as everybody's respectful. And, um, and so, so expect that the first test um, is going to be the hardest and that each test thereafter you will get better and you will do better and that's that's the way it should be. So I don't want you to get your first test back and be like, I'm gonna fail the course, it's horrible, I hate her. You know, I mean, you can say all that, I don't care, but um, I'm just forewarning you. It's called anticipatory guidance. Pediatrics. Um, okay, um, so turning the page. There are going to be course objectives, that's what we're grading you on. Um, there's some clinical and course expectations. I'm gonna go over those in a second. And um, so here's a really important piece. This is important, and I know that we have not, we, we have had some trouble with this before, but um, um, this is important for you to know for life and for nursing and um, for this program. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, start with the chain of command. So if you, um, feel like I'm the worst teacher ever and here are the things that I'm not doing right. So be specific, you can't just come and be like, I hate her. Um, we need you to say why and like bullet points, be specific. Um, I don't like public squares or you know, whatever it is. Um, go come to me first and say, I don't like you and this is why, so can you change it? And I'm gonna be like, no. And so then you go to the next chain of command, which is whom? I think, yes, thank you, your class reps. Go to your class reps. Your class, who are the class reps, by the way? Hi. What's your name? Chantal. Chantal, nice to meet you. Jenna. Jenna, nice to meet you, Jenna. Say it again. Antoinette, gotcha, Antoinette, okay. Um, they're, they're your class reps, you go to them. And um, if they can't reconcile it, um, and it may be outside of what they need to be doing anyway. If you're having an issue with another classmate, I don't want y'all to jump in there and try to start mediating like that. I don't know if that's your role. We'll have to call pencils. Um, um, y'all know pencils? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Y'all know All I know is they like pencils and the kids be running down, asking them up, running them up, you know, fight each other. Don't, I don't want to have to call pencils on y'all. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's when they call they need pencils in class. Yeah, pencils. Uh, we'll call pencils on y'all. We'll switch out. Um, so go to your class reps, um, but, but um, just kind of stay in your lane. Um, Christine Bagley, I think, is probably the next person you should go see, and then Kate, and then it um, goes up from there. Who's next after that? Is his name um, Ruth? Yes. And then um, um, all the way to, you have the option to go all the way to, to the board. Now, here's the thing. I don't suggest you go to the board um, without having gone through the steps first. I believe we had an issue like that last semester, and it did not turn out well because um, one of the first things that they wanted to know was, well, what did the person who you had the problem with say? Well, I didn't go to them. Well, why are you wasting my time if you haven't even done the basic bare minimum steps? 
and document it in writing. So the fact that you, well, I talked to them, and he said, and she said, and I didn't feel, and like none of that matters, documentation only. So if you have an issue, um, make sure you, it's in writing, you go through the proper channels, and when it gets to the head of the group, that is when they're going to say, you did everything that you were supposed to do, you must have your ducks in a row, you must be somebody who follows regulations, so I'm more apt to believe what you have to say. Because if you come in here talking all crazy and saying she didn't do and I haven't talked to her and you don't have anything in writing, you are not credible. Um, so follow chain of command. Um, we, um, when I was a senior in college at the nursing program, we had a new dean come in and she was going to fix our school because our drop rates had kind of dropped, a little, our pass rates had dropped a little bit. So she instituted this new policy and she wasn't even doing the policy correctly. She wasn't interpreting the data correctly. So like all of us were going to fail and she was going to not let us take the NCLEX um, and make us repeat the semester, which was the dumbest thing ever, just because you can't fail a whole class. Like that doesn't make sense. Uh, probably about 10, about, um, 20, 20 to 30 percent loss is usually about normal. Now at this level, we really try to keep who we have, but it, but if we but if you lose 20 to 30 percent of your class, that's not like unheard of. But you can't fail a whole class, right? So um, we had to grieve it, and we went through the entire grievance process, and we did it right, man. We were so solid, um, and she got fired. <laughs> I am not joking. And when and she when she sees she can't stand me, boy, I tell you, she went right on back to Louisiana where she came from. But at any rate, um, I'm just saying, if you do it right, you can really go far. Um, if if, there, if you have something substantive. <clears throat> um, grading policy. You all are familiar with that? Let's jump down to how what what grade will be in So you have five exams. And they're each worth 16% of your grade, so that's a total of 80%. 10% of your grade is based on your the ATI exam, so 5% for the practice and 5% for the final. Now, that practice exam, um, I don't, um, if you don't pass it the first time, which you may not because it's a practice exam and we're taking it, um, Four seven, so that is um, uh, you know a month before you take your final exam. So we still have a month of school left. In order to get the five points, you and in order to take the final exam, you must remediate. Uh, and there is a particular um, activity that you will need to do to remediate from that practice exam. So everybody will take the practice exam on the uh, what is that? The seventh of April. Um, if you do not score, if you do not score within passing range, then you'll have to remediate based on what you missed, and you'll turn that into me, and that will be your ticket to take the final exam. So everybody should get the full five points for the practice ATI, because if you don't, then you're kind of stuck because you haven't even done what you need to do to take the final. So in order to sit for the final, you must have submitted remediation or passed the first time on the practice. You still have to take the final, and that score is what will be multiplied by 5% for your final exam. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The final ATI. Okay, so five exams, a practice and a final ATI, and then the other 10% is homework. So there are five, four homework assignments and one in-class assignment. Um, and each one is worth two points. Um, if you do it, you, you, get, you get the points, and, um, and you can just add 10 points to your grade. Um, there will be no curves on exams. Um, there probably won't be any supplementals either because at this point we have um, vetted the exams um, and, and we're, we're confident in what we're teaching. If there is something that's on the exam that we didn't cover, you need to bring it to my attention because that's not fair and you've got evidence. Um, if there's a discrepancy and your book says one thing and the test is grading something else, bring it to my attention because that's not fair. So your book and the PowerPoint are, um, is what you need to rely on in terms of, of uh, our contract for what we're teaching you and what we expect you to learn. Um, let me say this, the PowerPoint is probably one of the most important things that I, that resources that I have for you because if it's not in the PowerPoint, it's probably, it, I mean, it's not probably, it's not on the test. So if, you, so if you get to a section in the book and you're like, there's nothing in the book on this second, on my PowerPoint in this section, um, I'd say it's not, it's not on the test, it's, it's not something that you prioritize. 
Oh, hold one second. I think you had a question first. Yeah, I'm sorry. It was actually going back slightly to the ATI. When you were saying the passing grade, our experience before with the ATI was um, done by levels. So I'm just um, curious, like if you scored an 80, um, that would have been a level three. How are you, what is passing? Um, is level one or level three the highest? Level three is the highest. Level one was like needed extra help. Level, level two you passed. Oh, level, level two was passing? Yeah, level, level two was two. passing and level three was like exceptional or something, I don't know. Then level two, whatever is okay, passing. Okay, so it's, it's by standard. level. Like, That's okay. right. All That's right. right. What you all are used to. So whatever has been the standard for passing <laughs> is the same standard. Okay. Um, I'll come right back to you. Um, internet? So you don't go by the fair game. Um, explain. I'm, I'm not sure what the said that if it's not in the PowerPoint, if it's in the book, it's not going to be on the test. Well, now you're responsible for any of the information that's in the book. Right. However, um, I'm telling you this on camera that if it's if if I think it's important enough to be on the test, I'm putting it on your PowerPoint. That's what I want to know. Now I may put one word on the PowerPoint. And you and I may tell you you need to go read a little bit about this, and we'll talk about it. But um, but I will. But if there's only one word, I will say to you, this is what you need to know about that. If I skip past it and I don't say this is what you need to know about that, you need to ask me. But generally, I I um, I'm pretty explicit. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Um, with the breakfast, how many times mm -hmm. you can only take it once? You can only take the practice this once. I think you can take the practice as many times as you yeah. want. I think there's two versions of the practice. I think that it's going to, um, you're going to see the same question. So I, as a matter of fact, yes, so this is what happens. Um, people take the practice test, and, you know, maybe they vomit, it, um, and then they go back and they take it again and get 100, like five minutes later, and they take it in like less than four minutes, um, the whole thing. Um, that is not beneficial for you. All you did was memorize the answers, and um, those are not the questions that you will see on the final. So, um, what is, I would not suggest saying to take the exam again, the same one. I would say review the rationales, because that is what's most important. Why? But they don't rationale for the wrong answer. They don't, yeah. they don't give you the rationale for the no, they only give you for the wrong answers? Yeah. Yeah. They give you both. They give you both. No, if you answer it correctly, they won't give you the right answer. Yeah, if you answer it correctly, they won't give you the right answer. Well, okay, so um, you all may want to double check that. We're not quite there yet, but um, as many rationales as you can read is good. They don't give it to you. Go with what you got. Okay, homework assignments. Are we already talking about that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you got the homework assignments. Those are the due dates, and I'll give you your first homework assignment tomorrow. Well, you've got one today. Register for the um, course sites. Um, and then... Um, you get two points for that? No. Just no. take <laughs> You get access. And sometimes access is more important. You know, um, access is really important. It is, don't let anybody in this world tell you different. It is about who you know. Um, you have to know something when you get there, so you have to have some substance. But um, it is every bit of who you know. What is your whole consistent? Oh, it depends. You know, I'm not be creative, but I'm, I'm not going to be creative for tomorrow. Uh, it'll probably be some um, crossword, crosswords and um, like a word search where you have to, uh, the, you got the definitions. You have to figure out what word you're searching for. Because this first couple of chapters is really more about like terminology and memorization. It's not, um, like for example, there's a fetal heart um, monitoring activity that's a little bit more hands on. You have to actually figure out a fetal strip and, and make some determinations. There are some critical things and questions, but uh, we're going to take it easy tomorrow. It'll just be word search. It may not be easy, but it'll be word search and crossword. Um, so if you're allowed to work on them together and collaborate in groups, um, everything is collaborative except for the exams. Now, don't collaborate on that, I'll put that Okay, it's important to read before class. Um, I suggest you do it because then you can ask better questions. Um, ask any question. There's no question that is too dumb or anything. The only dumb question is the one you don't ask and you're still walking around not knowing the information. Um, and in fact, the more questions you ask, the more I know that you're engaged and the more I can gauge how you're learning and where I need to beef it up. Um, ask productive questions, though, because we're short on time. 
Um, and you will see that time becomes really important when the tests aren't going to change, but the, my ability to get the information in, um, hopefully I'll have enough time. Um, group work is important. If there are people in this class that you don't like, I don't care. And in fact, if I find out about it, I'm likely to put you in the group with them because um, learning how to work through differences is really important. And um, so <coughs> group, group work, expect, expect there to be some. Um, please anticipate your needs and your breaks. Now, I, I, I um, may have to be a little bit more strict about movement and seating charts and so forth. Um, depending on what comes down through the ranks and when we have our faculty meeting um, next, at the beginning of next week or at the end of this week. But um, I will do my job and do what they ask me to do. And I'm not really going to gripe about it. I, if they ask my opinion, I may give it. But either I'm going to do the job or I'm not. And if I'm not, I can go get another one, right? Um, however, let me tell you what is a bigger priority for me that you don't distract your classmates, um, that you don't distract me since I'm looking at you, and, um, and, and, that, and that you're respectful. Of course I'm making an opinion. If, if every class in the middle of class, you have to get up and go to the bathroom, I'm like, hmm, I'm worried about what kind of nurse they're gonna be because they can't anticipate their own bodily functions. Now, if you're pregnant, maybe you can't, and that's okay, we understand. But what I'm saying is, um, I try to give everybody a break about you know once an hour, um, and if you can't still sit still for an hour, then um, I, I worry about you. But my opinion doesn't matter, insofar as you don't need a letter of recommendation. Um, what matters is that you are getting the information that you need. So try to, try to get that. Um, identify your strengths and your weaknesses. I am very strong in certain areas. Um, and I know what those areas are, so I capitalize on them. I'm weak in some areas. You're not going to see me doing those things. Um, you know, working in those fields. So for example, um, clinical. I, I have, clinical was one of my weaker areas. As, an, as a nursing student, I was really good with the theoretical stuff and um, um, I'm good with teaching. So in the clinical setting in NICU, one of my best roles was dealing with families, doing teaching, teaching CPR class. Now I have a minimum level of knowledge and I can provide competent care. and you have enough experience and you become one of the best. But I know where my strengths and my weaknesses are. What I'm saying is if you identify them, then you can really gird yourself up in those areas that are weak, um, that you have to be at least minimally competent in, and you can really capitalize on your strengths. Um, academic integrity, I think is really important. And um, that also, uh, and professionalism. So those are my two pet peeves, the quickest way to frustrate me is to um, make me question your integrity and um, to not be professional. Um, I really feel that way in class. I feel it even more so in clinical because then you represent me and you're all in blue and so we can see you, we can identify you. Do not make me look bad out there in that clinical site. I will be pissed um, and it will not bode well for you. Now, I don't expect to have any of those problems at all. I really don't. But I just want to put it up there up front. Those, those are my pet peeves. Um, yeah, so I'll just leave it at that. Hopefully, we don't have to revisit that. Um, we're going to do clinical at Crozier. Oh, I'm jumping around. I'm sorry. Um, talk about homework assignments. You've got your topical outline on the back, so I just kind of pay attention to that. You see, we kind of front loaded some things um, because we have class today, tomorrow, Monday and next Thursday. And so next Thursday will be your first exam. We will do lecture after class, so we have to get in, be ready to take the exam right on time, bags lined up against the wall, nothing on your desks. Um, if you, the, the more time it takes us to get ready, you cut into your, your testing time. Um, so, so, you, so you want to have as much testing time, I think I'm giving you an hour, how much do you all usually have to take a test? So you'll have an hour and 15 minutes to take my exams. Um, but that starts at um, the time that class starts. So if, if you all are ready, the more time, the more time you all will have. Um, we'll do an exam review right after that, and then we'll move into um, the lecture. Um, you can see when the homeworks are due, when the exams are due, um, and what chapters we'll be covering. So it would be helpful to read before class. I think clinical starts when. 
Next week? No, not next week. Next week. week after next, right? Okay, so do you all have your clinical schedule? You know who's supposed to be where when? Okay, we there. Just, just ready to go. Um, clinical will be at Crozier, Chester Medical Center. Do you all know where that is? Yes. There's no parking. You know that? Yeah. Okay, so you have to park on the street or pay for parking, so you may want to get there early. Um, we'll meet in the atrium. Um, so you, it's pretty much the most central location right here, and so you can't miss it. You can ask somebody how to get there. Um, um, clinical attire. So, you know, make sure you've got your uniforms on, make sure they're clean. Um, hair needs to be off your collar. Um, no earrings. Um, if I, uh, no dangling earrings. If you have hoops, I, I should not be able to put my pinky finger through your hoops. Um, so these clearly would not go. <laughs> um, tr uh, try to, no jewelry, except for maybe a wedding ring. Um, if you were a Nikki, we'd make you take that off for sure, and your watch too, because they just harbor bacteria. Um, infection control, because you don't, you don't want to give anything to these patients, but you definitely don't want to take anything home to your kids either. Um, IDs, make sure you have your IDs, and make sure you have your stethoscope and, um, and, and a watch. Um, and anything else that's in that handbook. Um, I'm going to talk more about clinical expectations when we get there, but um, just remember that you are a representation of us, and um, that, that really goes a long way. Reputation it really precedes you, and um, nursing is a small community, and so the reputation that you build is the one that will kind of stick with you, and, and, and it makes all the difference in terms of who wants to work with you, and um, so it, your reputation is key. Um, If you have not accept, don't be, don't, how do I say this? We want to keep everybody safe. We want to keep you all safe. We want to keep patients safe. We certainly want to keep me safe and my mental, my, my, my um, mental stability. Um, assess before you do, and that is a common thing because those babies are cute. They're like normal babies, most of them. Um, and, and the moms are tired and they're like, feed my baby and they just hand the baby over and they're, you know, so there, there's room for lots of hands-on stuff. Um, but before you start feeding babies and start touching on moms and poking and prodding and stuff, um, make sure you know who's, make sure it, it, you, if you are assuming care for that patient, then you are also assuming responsibility, which means that you have to have a certain level of knowledge before you put your hands on that patient. Um, don't, don't be assistant in any codes, okay? Stay in your lane as a student. Observe, um, run get the crash cart, know where the crash cart is, but I don't wanna see anybody doing any chest compressions, I don't wanna see anybody you know, pushing no fluids, none of that stuff, okay? Um, I don't even wanna see you at the, at the front administering oxygen or bagging, no, I just want to see you looking wide-eyed, if anything. So don't, don't, um, don't stick your hand up in any um, places. If the nurse is like, here, feel this, don't do that. Um, I'm talking about um, checking. So some of these patients will be laboring. Um, I don't want to see any of you all checking for dilation and defacement, okay? <laughs> Keep your fingers out of orifices, okay? I mean the moms, and I also mean the babies. We do not um, do rectal stimulation to make them go poo. We don't stick up anything up in there. Now, if you want to visualize some stuff, like let me see your lochia, let me, let me see your stuff, let me see if it's swollen, that's great. There are other ways that you can do those assessments if you don't feel like telling the woman to spread her legs and you know, I mean, that doesn't always go over so well with them either. Um, but, but there are certainly ways to assess and you are responsible for those assessments um, one way or another, but do not stick your hand in any um, orifice, please. Um, HIPAA and document. If you didn't document, you didn't do it. And I will have um, documentation forms for you to use, which I will also post online so you can see what those look like ahead of time. Um, standard precautions, isolation. If there's any, if, if anybody requires an N95 mask, which they should not, and none of these women really should. Um, but you, that is not a patient for you because we have not been fit tested for N95 masks, so you should not be in a room where the person is on airborne um, precautions or isolation. Um, so the way clinical will probably work is that we will meet 
um, at 7 a.m. Is that what time clinical starts? Yes. And we will go up to the unit um, immediately thereafter. So by about 7.05, we want to be on the unit. And that way, it would be helpful if you all could hear report. You may not be able to hear report. We're not going to ask nurses to stop what they're doing to um, let us hear what they are giving reporting to the, each other. Um, but I will assign patients, and you all will need to get report from your nurse or at least start an assessment. Um, so introduce yourself to your patients and, and start an assessment. Um, and we'll go over kind of what some of those assessment things are next week. Um, and then we will meet back together probably about 9, 9.30, and you all will give report to your classmates um, and talk about what your plan of care is for the day. Um, and, uh, and then you'll go do that plan of care and we'll meet for, uh, go to lunch. We'll come back from lunch probably about 1, um, 30. What time do we get out of there? 2.30? No, that's too late. Um, we'll make sure you eat so you don't pass out because I also don't like that when you pass out. Um, that's not good. If, so if you feel like you're going to pass out, please back away from the patient, stand up against the wall and slide down slowly. Um, <laughs> Y'all are laughing, but I've seen some things happen in that C-section room, boys. So if you if you are queasy, that is not a place for you. Yes, ma'am. Don't we get a morning break? A 15-minute morning break? We're we'll reporting to each other. That's going to be our 15-minute morning break. We're going to break together. Um, um, I'm kind of joking, but um, that's a good point and one that I will take into consideration because yes, you you, you do you do need a break. But the the floor is. Um, in such a way that there are places for you to break and take a morning break, so you, so yes. And um, there will be points at which there will be not a lot going on, so it will be an opportune time for you to take a break. Um, bring your lunch if you want to. The lunch is kind of expensive there, and I don't think all that. Well, I mean, it's great, it's great. It's a great lunch. Um, okay, questions about clinical? Um, Okay, let's uh, talk about maternal child health. Oh. Let's see, where are you? What time is it? One o'clock? What time did we start? 12? 20? Okay, we've got some time. Yeah, we'll watch videos tomorrow. There's just some quick clips about the state of um, maternal child health, um, talk a little bit about mortality, um, and just kind of where we have come and, and what our priorities are. But what you need to know are what the goals for maternity care are. 
Um, now, there are, what, how many pages? Oh, just one page of goals. Here we go. What kind of questions do you think? Because you're definitely going to have like one or two questions from this, just this one slide right here. What kind of questions do you think I would ask about this? That's a good idea. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that would be a great question for us to let all that applies. And then I'd throw one or two in there that aren't goals at all. Like, uh, what would be one that I'd throw in there? Something like, um, um, eliminate all unintended pregnancies. Like, that's just not even realistic. Eliminate all. There go your two absolutes right there. Um, let me see, what's another one? Um, Increase, increase the percentage of women who have ever been screened for sexually transmitted infections. That's a great goal, but when yeah, it's no right. Okay, yeah, that's a great. Give me, give me another, give me one more suggestion, because I, I, I have a question for this one. But that's a good one, though. Let me do that one. Write that down. Hierarchy. Yeah, what's it again? Hierarchy. Yes. The nurse knows that a priority goal of maternity care is which of the following? And I'm gonna put four of these up there. Let me tell you which one. Um, number two. So circle these on your on your on your paper so you can come with the answer. Number two, number uh, number three. Number four, what is that? So two, three, four, and six. Feel supported. Which of the following was a priority? The nurse knows which of the following was a priority goal of maternity care. Okay, how many of you? Oh, um, here go my cards right there. I should go on and pass these out right now. I hope I have enough. Oh, I may not. You may have to tear them in two. Um, so tomorrow, I'm going to pass out some note cards, and we're going to start doing some, some questions. Do we have some clickers? Have y'all used the clickers yet? Can not figure out how to work the clickers? Um, what's the thing that we use with the um, Lord? So we may have to get some clickers going. But how many of you all say one? I mean, the, the, first, the first answer two. choice. That's two. Okay, so that was what? The woman reports adequate instruction. How many of you all say the second answer choice? Maternal or fetal complications. Okay, how many of you all say the third choice? Healthy parent attachment. And how many of you all say the fourth choice? Feel supported during pregnancy. Okay, tell me why maternal fetal complications is the priority. Yes, ma'am. Did you find out about it? You can help prevent certain things along pregnancy. That is true. True, that's very correct, but not the reason why that's the priority. Good, good, good answer. What else? It is safety. It is safety. It's safety. Um, but where, where does that fit into where the other ones are? We could, could have some airway circulation up there, right? Yes, ma'am. We do assess first. And um, assess, assessing is one of the first things that we do. So I definitely say that assessing is a priority before we jump out there and do something. Um, so if, if one of these had been, so assess before we teach, maybe. But let's go back to your safety point. Yeah, but you have a We can come back to you. Internet. Can you say it again? Can you rephrase the question? Which of the follow, re rephrase it or restate it? Restate. Okay, um, the, um, the nurse is caring for, no. Which of the following is a priority goal of maternity nursing care? Out of the one who served. That's right. Somebody, go ahead. Tell me. I was me. thinking about uh, preeclampsia and that's a circulation problem with the maternal and fetal? Where do you see circulation and preeclampsia up there? What I'm talking about, the uh, complications. It is an example of a complication. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, right, so what you're saying is that there could be 
circulation. Um, you are right to anticipate that the most likely complications will be related to circulation because even though I haven't taught you all that, that's the system that is most affected by the changes that occurs in pregnancy. You're absolutely right. Um, yes, ma'am. Not there yet. Okay. <laughs> Not there. Oh, um, no, you're right. I did say it. maternal fetal complications is the correct answer. Yes, ma'am. Because it could be a life or death. Um, Depending on the complications. Could be. So, like this, which is why I feel like it's a safety issue. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Doesn't it kind of like help the mother kind of handle it early on? Um, um, that's what you said. What's your name? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's what Pick said. So um, yes, that is a true statement, but not the reason why it's a priority. I want to go back to, we do want to anticipate that stuff is good, but um, tell me more about safety. Because all the period is the first for all the psychosocial. Right, because all the rest of the psychosocial. We got some teaching going on right here. We've got, what is this, newborn attachment? How do you feel? Now, attachment could lead to failure to thrive, but that is not up there yet. That's a complication. Um, so this is psychosocial, that's psychosocial, and what's that other one? It's feel supported. All those are psychosocial. Right. That's the only physical one up there. That is a priority. The physical is a priority. And it happens to be a safety physical. <laughs> Questions on that? No. no. All right, there goes one question. Out of how many did only test? 50, 100? How many questions are there? 50. You know, you know. You know now. You know 100. So, so expect that, that that's a question that, I'll, that I'm going to ask. I already, so there's one for your test exam one. Okay, let's talk about birth settings. Um, so great, we've got all these different ways you can pop out a baby. What's important about this? What? Safety. 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 You're right, tell me more. Yes, comfort. Comfort is definitely important. Safety is, um, probably our focus, so I may, now, I may ask a question about comfort, um, but I may also ask you to determine if comfort is something that we should be attending to, or if there's a safety issue that needs to take precedent. I'll give you an example. Yes, ma'am. What birth settings are what? I said what's important about the different birth settings. Like, what do we need to think about in terms of why it matters, which birth setting they're in? Yes, ma'am. Say, um, baby's breathing and circulation, and mom's breathing and circulation. Absolutely, safety. Yes, ma'am. I was just going to say, like stress on the mother mm -hmm. can cause stress on the fetus. So if the mother is in a relaxed uh, environment where she feels comfortable, um, because you have to monitor like the baby's heart rate, and um, so that could affect the child in a positive way if they're in. A That's. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yes, ma'am. Also, like, um, to lower, well, to prevent infection or, you know, so clean. 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 Yes. So let me, let's stop there for a second. We've got infection, we've got safety, and we've got comfort. Anything else you want to kind of throw on the table? I feel pretty confident with that because there go three questions right there. So let me see. Um, the first one I want to talk about is comfort. So I may ask a question like, yeah, pain. That goes with comfort. I may say something like, um, the nurse is caring for a, a uh, pregnant woman, a, a woman with a low-risk pregnancy who is getting ready to labor. Which of the following birth settings would be most appropriate to, um, for this mother or to address her comfort or to, provide, to promote comfort for this mother during the laboring process? Um, any suggestions about which one would be the best? It's the safest. Isn't it? The, even the water births. Yeah, these are great. It's all comfortable. Maybe even like a home birth. Um, some, something where there is, um, yeah, that water birth, that home birth, that's good stuff. Um, we want to be careful about, now, who would not be eligible for this? High risk. High risk. High risk. High risk. So if I said mom is, um, or woman is pregnant with a high risk pregnancy, or maybe I didn't say high risk because that'd be too easy. I threw a complication in there and you had to know that that was a high risk, um, okay. which would be appropriate. And home birth, tub birth, C-section, or you know, labor and delivery room, I mean, put up there. So maybe she doesn't need a C-section, but she doesn't need to be in the tub. Yes, ma'am. Um, question, are we assuming that the, is what they 
Like this was a bad birth and that affects the attachment. Yes, sir. Yes, great job that she wanna be in the tub and this, that, and the third, but you said if she's high risk, so the birth plan goes out the window, so does the uh, tub birth. So it would be safety. Safety trumps comfort, you dad I'm right. Right. But if she's low risk, she can do what she wants yeah, within limits. Course. But if she's high risk they want you in the surgery. Yeah, you're gonna be yeah. no, you know, we ain't taking the I'm not taking that risk. And if you can find another midwife or somebody else who wants to knock yourself out, but I'm not taking that risk. Um, and I can't imagine anybody else would. Um, okay, uh, well, so what did we say, infection? Oh, someone who else would not be, um, you'll learn later that having your membranes ruptured, so your water breaks more than 24 hours, puts you at high, high risk for infection. That's not somebody we wanna put in the tub back if they are at that point of high risk for infection. Obviously, her membranes have broken, otherwise she wouldn't have been able to push the baby out, but if they had been broken or ruptured more than 24 hours, that would not be good, because the water and, you know, is that dad in there with him? Did he bathe before he get in the tub? I mean, I don't know, I'm just like, there's a lot of people in that tub. Um, that's great, it's so great. Look at how he's supporting me, he's like, yes, we have a baby, it's great, okay. Um, let's talk about infection, safety and comfort, okay. Technological advances, so um, we're getting good at this technology stuff, um, but it doesn't come without unintended consequences. So just because we can save babies at a much younger age doesn't mean that their quality of- <laughs> 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 